my name is Crystal and this is the first official video on my makeup channel here on YouTube. I'm very excited to be joining the community. I've been asked by friends and family and colleagues for a really long time to start making videos and thought that starting the new year with a new channel would be really exciting. So here I am. Um, this look today is definitely inspired by what I am missing the most about winter and that is snow. So I live here in New York City and we haven't had snow yet this winter and that's my favorite part about this season. So we've got a little winter white, a little sparkle, um, but overall a daytime look. We kept it light with a light pink lip. It's very feminine, it's very wearable, um, not too smoky on the eye, not too dramatic a wing, although you could add any of those elements if you wanted to kind of transition this from day to night to be more dramatic. Um, a little light contour, really nothing over the top, but just glowing and feminine and channeling the winter post holiday. Um, there's so many holiday looks up on YouTube right now that I want to do something that still felt seasonally appropriate, but not holiday charged. I don't know about you, but by the time New Year's rolls around, I'm totally over the holidays. So I hope everybody enjoys. Um, if you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends. There will be lots more videos coming and i um, really excited to be here. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. Bye. Okay, so the first thing I do every single time is to prime my lips. So Clinique All About Lips, it's my ride or die. Been using it forever. It's kind of like a lotion, but it defeathers, it moisturizes, it makes them super smooth so that when you do go on later to do a lip product, it will go on like butter and then a lip balm and that kind of just sits on my skin. So then next we're gonna prime. This is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. It's very luminous. It has kind of a pearlescent quality to it. And I mix up my primers all the time, but today, daytime winter glow, we're going with Becca Backlight, and it's really beautiful. So this next product is another Becca favorite. Um, it's the Under Eye Brightening Color Corrector. It comes out a little pink. It's in that small glass jar. A little bit lasts a very long time, uh, but it's incredible. It's totally worth the splurge. It covers up dark circles really, really well, and it's, it's something I use absolutely every single day before foundation or concealer. So now for foundation, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation. I know a lot of people are hesitant to use stick foundations, as am I, but this one is really, really nice. Um, it goes on, it feels like it might be thick, but it blends out so beautifully, and it comes in a decent range of shades for a stick foundation. Um, my shade is the Y415 shade. Um, and I'm going to use this new brush. I just bought this brush, and I'm in love with it. It's from, I got it at Ulta. It's It brand IT and this is the Velvet collection which I think is kind of the premier level of their brushes and it's so dense and fluffy and soft it is like you are just brushing out your foundation with velvet um, so I'm a huge fan I'm planning to buy more of these brushes now that I've tried this one so you just want to blend it out all over the face, um, circular motions, be patient with it. You could also use um, something like a Fix Plus from MAC on the brush to really help sheer this out if you want to because it is full coverage, but I'm kind of feeling the full coverage look today. Next is concealer, and we're using my favorite concealers ever. They're the Naked um, by Urban Decay. Uh, full coverage weightless concealers. They're really quite a handful in terms of the name, but they're fantastic. Um, so the first one that I'm going in with is uh, pretty much my skin shade, maybe a little bit darker because my tan is fading, but it's the medium dark warm. And I'm just going to cover up any areas where there's, um, where I'm especially red or you can see a vein or, you know, any little imperfections that you want to kind of wipe out that the foundation didn't completely cover. And I'm also going to prime my eyes. So uh, this is an essential step when you're going to be using shadow, which, let's face it, is pretty much almost every time you do makeup. And I'm going to blend all of this out with a different brush, although you could use your foundation brush or a wet beauty blender sponge. So this brush is by Sigma. It's their tapered kabuki brush. It's, it's really great quality. Um, I think Sigma is one of the best brushes out there that you can buy. I have a lot of Morphe too because they're more affordable, but the Sigma brushes to me are superior. And I'm just, I like the tapered kabuki because it lets you get in there in the corner of your eyes and kind of in the corners of your nose. They have a small tapered 
uh, brush that's kind of the mini version of this, which is also fantastic. And then I'm going to go in with the lighter shade. This is the medium light neutral. And I'm going to use this under my eyes and also do a little bit of a highlight. Because we're not doing a very dramatic structured contour today, I'm actually going to kind of kill two birds with one stone and get some of the highlighting in using this lighter concealer, which is a great time saver for day-to-day -day morning. I'm heading to work makeup. Um, so you, you see I just kind of put it under my eyes in a triangular shape, down the cheeks, up toward the temples. You want to put a little bit on the forehead, a thin strip down the nose to kind of thin that out, and then the cupid's bow area and the center of your chin. Again, depending on your face shape and structure and the areas where you really need to bring more surface area forward, that's where you want to put your highlights. So if you have a really large forehead and that's something you want to downplay, you want to put less light concealer in your forehead area and when we get to contouring you'll want to contour more of it to pull it back so just think of it that way i saw this great meme it used lion king hello child of the 90s and it was like when simba's father tells him about the land where the light touches and then the dark shadowy place you must never go there simba um you can kind of think of it that way so wherever the light touches that's where you highlight and that's you know where the light would first hit your face and then wherever it's dark that's where you want to contour and bring it back so this product is by Marc Jacobs. It's the Mirage Filter Palette, and we're going to be using this Tarte brush. I think it's the Bronze Highlight Brush. Um, but there's two shades in this palette. One is definitely for setting under the eye. I think it's the perfect shade. These powders are like silk. They're so smooth, so buttery soft, um, and they really help prevent creasing and just set the face so beautifully. So this is one of my favorites. Um, there's three shades in this palette, three sets, if you will, of colors. Um, one is a much darker and more pink toned and then there's a lighter one as well so this is kind of in the middle this is color 40 next we're going to set some of the other parts of the face with a very translucent powder um, this is by cover fx it's their illuminating powder and yes that was my powder brush just flinging powder everywhere um, so you just lightly dab this all over the areas of the face where we didn't set it with the Marc Jacobs um, tinted powder and this is just to uh, really set a smooth, creaseless area to apply the rest of our product. Um, if you really want to stay dewy, you can, but this will make you more matte. Then we're going to go back in with the Marc Jacobs palette, and this is a Sephora Pro airbrush foundation brush, but I love to use it for contouring. And we're going to take that darker shade, and we're going to go right in at the hollows of the cheeks. You can pull your, pull your lips in to help identify where that area is, but you want to put it right in the hollow and then draw it up and toward the temples. Do, don't ever bring your contour down because it will actually draw the face downward. So you put it right in the hollow again, draw it up toward the toward the temples, and then we're going to blend it out little by little. I like to use these dabbing motions because I think it's less um, streaky and it just helps really press the product into your foundation. Um, but you, if you're using a different kind of brush or if you want to use a cream contour product and you're using a beauty blender, obviously you would use different techniques for that. Then you'll go in and add some to the temples, bring it up toward the forehead. Going back to our point before about contouring versus highlighting, if you had the larger forehead, you would contour a larger area to draw it back, especially up toward the hairline, make it darker, and then fade it a little bit lighter as you come toward the center of your face. That's the most important thing about highlighting and contouring is, is blending it and making sure that it feels like a gradual transition when it's in the front of your face. Um, as you get back toward the temples there, you can see it can be a little bit more dramatic um, in terms of the depth of the color. And now we're going to do under the chin and the jawline. Again, this just helps sharpen up the edge of your face. So once your contour is where you'd like it, then we're going to move on to the nose. So I, I don't like to use powder as much for the nose. This is a product by Smashbox. It's their contour and highlight stick trio. So yes, it does come in the three colors. You can't buy them individually. I've already written to them about how they need to sell them individually. But for now, you're stuck with all three. This is the darkest shade, the contour shade. There's also a lighter bronze shade stick and then a very, very light highlight stick. So you want to draw it down the sides of your nose, creating a really narrow highlight down the center. Your nose and its shape and structure may not require that you draw the lines all the way down from the bridge. You may just have kind of a wider ball at the tip that you want to narrow, and so you're going to focus your uh, contouring colors at that part of the nose. 
Also, I've worked on clients where they had broken noses that weren't quite straight still. You can use contouring to correct things like that too. Just put the darker color where you need the nose bridge to recede to one side and then the highlight where you want it to kind of curve back out. It uh, takes a little practice, but once you get used to the structure of your face, it becomes very routine. So once your contour is really blended out, including the tip of the nose there, we're going to go in and start with the eyes. So this is the Lorac Mega 2 Pro Palette, and we're going to start with this light transition shade. I think it's called Melon, and this is a Morphe uh, blending brush. It's really long, fluffy bristles. So when we want to really diffuse the color like that across a wider part of the eye, you want to use a fluffier brush that can really um, put the color all around in a less precise manner. So you can see here, it's kind of a peachy light shade. This is very natural. We're using this as the transition and you start in the crease and you go back and forth and bring it up toward the brow bone. This doesn't have to be very precise, but you do want to make sure it's well blended and not choppy because we're going to layer on more colors to add more dimension as we go. So as I said, just go back and forth, back and forth, um, add the circular motions, especially at the outer corner of the eye. This will really help blend it and make it look smooth and seamless. Next, we're going to go in with a slightly darker shade. This one here, it's a little more brown. It's called Tawny, I believe. And it's, again, just building dimension slowly. We're going to switch brushes, though. This is a Sigma a blending brush. I, I'll list all the products down below. I can't recall the exact number of this brush at the moment, but this is one of my absolute favorites. It actually replaced a very popular MAC brush. I think it's the 217. Um, the bristles are ideal for blending out in the crease area. Again, not a super precise brush, but denser bristles than the last one so that you can kind of get more into the crease and not spread the shadow as far up toward the brow bone. So just have patience with it, work it back and forth. It's okay if at first it doesn't look super smooth and it looks choppy. Don't get discouraged, just keep blending. You can go back to the lighter shade if you have to just to keep it looking seamless, but the key is to have patience and just keep going on through. So next we're gonna add um, the next layer. This is a darker shimmery tone. I think it's called cinnamon. And we're going to focus this now more on the outer corner of the eye. I'm using the same Sigma brush that we were just using with the tawny shade, but we're going to focus it on the outer corner of the lid and then blend it into the crease toward the inner eye and then up a little bit toward kind of think of it like you're moving toward the um, outer tip of your brow. So just focus it in that area. You'll see on my uh, the eye that I'm not working on, it's starting to draw the outer corner of the eye outward. The whole point of this kind of shading is to make the eye look bigger and more open, and you do this by adding, adding on layer by layer of color and then blending it outward in that outer corner toward the brow. So as you continue to blend, you'll start to see it come together. Again, patience, 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 but um, just keep working it. We're going to start with the inner corner now a little bit. This is a Sigma pencil. It's really an inner rim brightener pencil that you'd put on your waterline, but I really needed a white pencil just to go under our white shadow to keep it um, bright and really make it pop. So this is what I grabbed, but you could use any white um, eye pencil that you have around. It does not have to be this one from Sigma. Um, and you're just going to kind of work it from the inner corner across the center of the lid a little bit. This just serves as a base for the white shadow that we're going to put on. It gives it something to adhere to, but it also um, brightens it from underneath so that the white shadow doesn't look dull and chalky. It gives it a little bit more of a pop. I probably should have sharpened this pencil before I sat down to do this look, but um, so it's a little dull, that's why you see me going back and forth with it over the lid a couple of times. But if you have one that's nice and sharp and creamy, it should go on very quickly. This step should not slow you down. So now it's time for the white shadow. We're going to use this shimmery pale shade here. It's called Sugar. Uh, this is a really beautiful shimmery white. Um, sometimes really stark white on the lids can look a little jarring, um, especially if you have a skin tone that's, you know, middle of the road or a little warmer, it can look like, whoa, her eyes are really bright. So this is a very wearable white shade. It's, as you can see, it's not super stark white, so it's not going to shock anybody. Um, but it's really pretty and it has the right amount of sheen. It's not glittery. It's not, it's not looking like, you know, you pick this up at Claire's. It's going to look soft. It's going to look wintry. 
definitely feminine and because it's a light shade it'll make the eyes look bright and open and awake um, which is partly why this is such a daytime appropriate look because it makes the face look really fresh. So now I've decided that the corner of the eye needs a little more dimension. So we're going to use this rounded tip brush. I wouldn't call it a pencil brush. I think this is from Sephora. Uh, again, I'll link them down below. But we're just going to take one of these sort of rounded head fluffy brushes at first and just pack the color in the corner. It's a black ivy. It's the darkest shade in the palette. And then take our original Sigma brush and just blend it out. So pack it in the corner like in the shape of a V and then blend it out um, inward and upward using that Sigma brush. As you can see already, this just adds a little bit more depth to the outer corner. It makes it a little bit smokier than we had it before. If you skip this step, it's totally fine. The eye um, was certainly complete before, but I just felt like it needed a little extra something, especially because we're going to be putting on some fairly dramatic lashes um, to top this off, and without that extra depth in the corner, it might not feel like it fits quite as well. So I can't stress this enough, just keep blending, 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 especially because we just added a darker color. Darker colors need to be blended even more so than lighter colors. So anytime you add a darker shade into a look, just remember that you have to account for the blending time. So back and forth, back and forth across the crease, you will see that it's it's making the white a little bit more dull because we went back in with a darker color, but that's okay. Um, just go back in with the white shade. This is on, by the way, I didn't mention this brush, but I'm using a an Urban Decay flat tipped brush. It's actually a double-ended brush that it came with their electric palette, and I really, really like it. Um, but any flat, uh, fluffy brush will work, and you just pack on a little bit more of that white shade. So now we're going to go in with a little bit of liner. This is Smashbox Always Sharp Liner in Raven, which is also known as black. And we're not doing a super dramatic liner here, but we do want the lash line to have that darkness to it, especially because we're going to put on lashes. So you want to go in, Start. I start at the outer corner, keep it as close to the lash line as you possibly can, and just make a nice, uh, dark, consistent line. It Again, it just takes patience, and you can get really comfortable with this process once you know the line of your eye, but get as close to the lashes as you can and make it an even thickness. If you do want to taper it toward the inner corner, that's usually a good idea. Um, thinner toward the inner corner, thicker toward the outer corner. And then we're not doing a true wing, but we're just going to flick it out a little bit. When you stop your liner right at the outer edge of your lid, it can make the eyes look small. So just follow the natural line of the your lash line out toward the edge of your brow and just flick out a little wing to give the eyes that really almond pulled out shape. And because this is still a daytime look, we don't want anything to look too harsh. So I'm gonna take this, this is a Sephora double-ended brush and it has these really short little buffing bristles. Uh, it's a great brush, and you're, but any definer brush would work. And you're just gonna run over the line a little bit just to soften the edges so it doesn't look harsh. Um, this is a subtle little step. If you missed it, it's you know certainly not going to make or break the look. But I just think to keep it daytime, that softening this liner a tiny bit will really go a long way. Next is mascara. This is a drugstore mascara. I know, I know. There's so many great designer mascaras out there, but I just have never tried one that I think is better than this one. This is CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara in Berry Black. I do not like the waterproof version of this. So if you're looking for waterproof, I wouldn't go with the CoverGirl. But the regular formula, I have worn this for about 10 years. I've tried others in between, and I always come back. Um, the, brush, the brush is like um, one of those rubber bristle brushes, and I just think it, it catches the lashes better. Next is brows. Um, my brows are very thin, as you can see, and I really work a long time to change the shape. You can definitely do your brows however you do them. This is the Smashbox Brow Tech Matte Pencil in the color Taupe. Um, I love Anastasia Brow Wiz um, pencil. I, I wore it for a long, long time, but the truth is that their colors just don't really match my hair as perfectly as this taupe one from Smashbox, so I switched. If you like the Anastasia Brow Wiz, but you have the same issue with the colors, try the Smashbox. They're actually really, really great pencils. So after I've filled in the front of the brow, um, up toward basically where the arch is, I'm going to take the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in Soft Brown, and then this is her angled brow brush, and I'm going to take a little bit on the brush and then just 
carve out that um, arch there and then uh, the tip of the brow out toward the temple. I just don't think that pencils can make it as precise as using the pomade and an angled brush. So I, I'm, I basically use two products, one in the front half of the brow to make it a little softer and then the pomade in the, the dip brow, excuse me, in the back half of the brow to make it more precise. So I hadn't shown it on camera, but I had put glue on these lashes before I did my brows. So they had a second to dry a little bit. Uh, but these are by the brand Eyelashy, and they're the style Naughty. They're very mod. They kind of have sectioned off chunks of lashes in them, which is a little bit different and a little more dramatic, given that the rest of the look is so simple in daytime. Um, I'm using a tweezer to press these on. I press on the center of the lash first, and then I pull back the outer part of the lash to the lid and then I do the inner part. The inner part's the hardest part to get to stick. I think everyone would agree with that. Um, but with this method, I find it easier because at least the rest of the lash is anchored before I try to adhere the, the inner, um, inner lid portion of the lash. And these are so flirty and pretty. I really love them. So last brow product, now that I have to go back and finish my brows, this is Benefit's Gimme Brow. It comes in two shades. This is the light medium, and then there's a medium dark for darker hair and skin tones. Um, and it is like a tinted brow gel, but it's also a brow thickener, which is really interesting. And then I did my other brow. You don't need to watch me do it twice. You get the idea. They're brows. So now I'm taking a definer, pen, a definer brush excuse me, and doing the bottom lash line. I'm starting with the shade Cinnamon from that Lorac palette. That was the shimmery brown shade that we used on the outer corner of the eye. And I'm just going to start at the outer corner of the bottom lash line and then work it inward. And then the, the Black Ivy shade, which was that really dark shade that we added to kind of make the eye a little smokier, I'm just going to dab a little of that only on the outer corner of the bottom lash line. That'll just deepen it and help bridge it with the little bit of a wing that we put on the top line. Now this is an inner corner highlight. This is by LA Girl. It's their gel liner in the color Champagne. I really wanted that inner rim to feel wintry and sparkly. And then I realized that the pencil, even though I think it's beautiful, it wasn't quite as dramatic. So I'm gonna grab a little Too Faced glitter glue. And this is the other end of that Urban Decay brush that has a super small little flat tapered tip. I took some glue and some MAC Loose Pigment in the color Whisper Pink, which is a very glittery, light pink shimmery shade. And I'm just gonna add that to the inner corner and the beginning of the bottom lash line, as you see here. So it kind of works with that champagne pencil to just really amp up the um, brightness and help the inner corner really sparkle and shine. Then it's a little bit of mascara. Again, it's why I love this brush. If you turn it horizontally, it's great for the top lashes. If you turn it vertically, it works perfectly for coating your bottom lashes. Next is a little bronzer and blush. This is the Stephen Klein palette by NARS. As you can see, it's gorgeous. And this is the other end of that Tarte bronzing brush. I'm just gonna use the fat side and a little bit of that Laguna bronzer and just soften out the top of our contour and help bridge it with the blush. So we're not bronzing the whole face. It's just kind of serving as a transition. And then I'm gonna take this angled blush brush from Morphe and use these two middle blush shades. It's kind of a melon color and then a warm pink color. And I think the two of them blended together are just so much more perfect than either of them by themselves. And you wanna pull it from your cheeks back. So to finish things off with a little highlight, I know, I know, it's broken. It's my Becca Champagne Pop by Jaclyn Hill and a tapered highlight brush from Sigma. And I'm just gonna dab that, make sure you shake off the excess or you'll look way too frosty. And then kind of put this on the cheekbone to the top of the cheeks in this C shape down from the temples. Um, you can skip the highlight if you're trying to go for an all matte look, but I just, I love the way that the glow looks even in the winter. Um, I don't think that the glow a uh, dewy look is only for the summer. I feel it's year-round appropriate, so if you like it, work it. A little on the cupid's bow, definitely down the bridge of the nose. Um, I tap the chin, the forehead, basically wherever we highlighted, you want a little bit of a glow. And then I'm going to take this pencil brush. Again, I think that this is from Sephora. And you're just going to put it on the brow bone right underneath the brow. Um, not only does this help serve as a final transition for all the eyeshadow we put on, but it gives um, the eye a little bit more lift, it accentuates the arch of the brow, brings the whole look together. Finally, our lips. This is a pencil from MAC. This is Boldly Bare. It's looking very, very pink on camera, but this is actually a very nude 
warm shade. Um, so little camera magic's making it look pink, but I promise you it's a beautiful nude. And I'm just going to line the whole lip and then going to go in with a Smashbox lipstick. Their B Legendary lipsticks are gorgeous formulas. Oh my god, they're so wet and moisturizing. And this is the color Pretty Social, which is a really kind of cool toned pink actually. It's super feminine. It's probably my favorite pink lipstick. Then we just finish it off with a little Urban Decay makeup setting spray to combine our cream and powder products. And this look is complete. I hope you enjoyed. Please tune in soon and I'll talk to you again. Bye! Oh,